Hi, here to talk about doing preventative maintenance on your GE Lunar Prodigy system. Preventative maintenance needs to be done in many steps, and I'm going to take you through all these steps to ensure that your customer system is functioning properly. One of the first steps is testing the wall voltage to ensure that you have the proper operating voltage. Testing your wall voltage is very important to ensure that your system is operating at the proper voltage. You also want to ensure that your system is on its own dedicated outlet specific for this system. Testing wall voltage can be very dangerous, so you want to make sure that you have the system powered off completely and you want to make sure that the system is unplugged before checking wall voltage. Make sure your meter is set to AC voltage and you should have a range right near 120 volts. Taking your leads, plugging them into the outlet, you should have a voltage again somewhere near 120 volts. Making sure that your leads are removed. At this point, the power is still off to your system and it's a good idea to lead into your PC maintenance so you don't have to power down. Doing your host PC maintenance is also very important. You wanna get inside the computer. In order to do this, you may need to take out the screws on the backhand side and then just simply slip one of the side covers off. This will gain you access to the inside circuit board and all the connections within the computer itself. First, I'd like to make sure that all my circuit board connections are secure, all my cables are secure, all the way throughout the system. And then with a static free vacuum and or an aerosol can, we can start to spray off and get any dust or debris. When the host PC maintenance is complete, just reassemble the panel and attach back to your machine. We need to ensure that we have proper lubrication on the high voltage connections. To do so, loosen up the set screw on your high voltage connection, unscrewing it and pulling it straight out. Once the connection is out, you're gonna lubricate a little bit of oil down the edge and just a few small drops on the internals where the four prongs are. Pushing in your connection, you wanna make sure that your key slot is lined up properly so no damage to the prong occurs. Push all the way in, finish tightening down your high voltage connection, make sure to set your set screw, and continue this process for all connections of high voltage. After this is complete, reassemble your system and turn the power back on and boot up your PC. Now that your system is powered back up and your PC is booted to the main Encore screen, we're going to take a look back at the QI trend reports and your error logs to determine if their system has been working properly. First, look at your quality assurance, click on the quality assurance, and you can review your plots right from that screen. You want to indicate or have a green light that has a passing status and to be a little more specific, you can actually get into the different settings and look at some of the different columns, which will give you different values to look at throughout your QA logs. Once you've reviewed your QA logs or plots, the next thing we wanna do is look at your error logs. Go to your tools up top and down to error log. At the top of your screen, you'll find the dates that errors have occurred. Some of these errors may be generic from a power up Going back through some of the other dates, you'll notice some of the different errors can pop up along the way. One of the ways for troubleshooting is to actually just click on the troubleshooting tab and look for troubleshooting techniques. Or you can filter errors and find other errors like this to see how far back the problem goes. Once you've reviewed your error logs, close out your software and get ready to do your mechanical inspection. The next step in doing your PM is to do a mechanical inspection. First, with the tabletop off and the power off to the system, vacuum out or dust out any debris that might be inside your system. Next, looking at the mechanical inspections themselves, your longitudinal belt, you need to check the tension on that, make sure the tension is still good. You should be able to flex the belt about four inches away from the bearing. Looking at your limit switches, making sure the bracket and the limit switch is secure. Looking at your incoming power, make sure that that's secure and any other connections on the DIN rail. We have already looked at the connections and re-siliconed on the high voltage power supply. 
looking at your CSB board, make sure all the connections are good all the way throughout the CSB Next, we want to look at the cable routing up to the cat track, making sure that your bulkheads are secure and your serial cable. We also want to have free movement for the tube and make sure that our flex is good on our high voltage cables going into the bottom of the tube. You can also test the belt tension on the transverse. And then you also want to look at and make sure that your motor brackets on each end of the table are secure, along with moving the arm longitudinally all the way down the table to make sure you have free motion. After going through your mechanical inspection, the next step is to verify that you still have good x-ray alignment. Placing the arm in the center of the table and returning power to the table and the PC. Once your Encore software is up, you'll need to get into service software. To do so, go to options, user options, making sure you're on your system tab, clicking on your little service box, and typing in your password. Click OK and OK again. From here, we can go to our tools and down to signal monitor. Before I start the signal monitor, I want to make sure that I place the aperture on the collimator. Click start. Once your energy levels come up, you'll want to verify your low energy and your high energy. The low energy is a little bit more sensitive, so what you want to look at is that the transverse or the low energy is up as high as you can get it all the way across. And looking at more of a longitudinal alignment, detector 1 and detector 16 should be somewhat equal across from each other. They may taper off down on each end. Once you've verified that your x-ray alignment is still good from an installation procedure, you can click abort. Save that. And then click close. Don't forget to remove your aperture tool from the collimator. Our next step in this process is to use the alignment aid tool to again verify our x-rays. Up to tools, diagnostics, and over to alignment aid. First, we're gonna use our get reference button. It tells us to make sure the aperture is not in place. Click OK. Taking a look at your reference values for each detector, they should all be somewhat close to each other. And again, also noticing that detector one and detector 16 are somewhat close. Our next step is to actually get alignment data. Click on your alignment data button. It tells us to make sure that the aperture is in place or on top of the collimator. Click OK. Once your alignment data is complete, it should show you a graph with a transmission. Notice your, your transverse alignment looks pretty good all the way across the red line and your detector 16 and one just falling off a little bit on either end. Again, you wanna verify your transverse error is plus or minus 2.5. Your longitudinal area is plus or minus one and same with the rotational degrees. If you're within your limits on all of these, just click save and now you've verified your x-ray alignment. Once you've recorded the values on your PM sheet, this should complete verifying your x-ray settings. Don't forget to remove the aperture from the collimator and move on to your next step. The final step in verifying your x-ray settings is to test your ramping voltage on the CSB board. To do so, go to tools, diagnostics, and down to scanner x-ray. Under x-ray source, you can change your KV settings or your MA current. Leaving it at 0.15, I want to ramp my voltage. With my positive lead hooked up to TP15 on the CSV board, making sure that my meter is set on DC volts, my value should be 0.15 or near that range. Switching over to TP16, 
reading that same voltage, 0.149. Now I wanna go back to my service software, make sure you stop the rampage of the voltage, and then you can change your MA current value, change to 0.75 and ramp your x-rays. Checking points TP16 and 15 again, you should have 0.75 or somewhere near that. Here I'm reading 0.74. And verifying TP15 again, 0.749. Last, you'll want to change your MA current to 3.0. Make sure you stop your ramping voltage. Set at 3, ramp again. And this time you're actually going to be testing TP15, 16, 17, and 18. On TP15, you should have somewhere near 3. We got 2.9. TP16 says 2.98, again good. And TP17 and 18 should have a different value of 3.7, as you can see there. And the same thing for TP18, 3.7. So now you've verified your x-ray settings that should complete verifying your x-rays all the way throughout the table. Make sure you stop your ramping current and close to go back to your main screen. Once your x-ray settings have been verified in the center of the table, it's a good idea to check your transverse and longitudinal positions. To do so, you'll want to run your limit to limit test. Go to Tools, Diagnostics, and over to Scanner Motion. Scanner motion, select your motion test tab at the top, click your limit to limit test, and click start. The arm will travel all the way around the table to verify positions. When test is complete, make sure that you have passing on all four sections. Once you've verified that all limit positions are passing, click close from the top of your screen and go back to your main Encore software. Before starting your QA scans, reassemble your tabletop and lock down with the screws. Then from your main Encore screen, click on quality assurance, move up to start at the top. The scan arm will move into position and you'll have to align the block according to the picture once you've aligned the QA block, click OK to start the scan. Once this process is complete, make sure it's passing, make sure you're getting a green light. Repeat this scan two more times to complete all three QAs. After acquiring all three QA scans and verified that all three are passing, one of the final steps to do is test the accuracy of your system. To do so, you'll need to scan the Phantom three different times and gain an average. This can be done with the encapsulated Phantom or the water bucket. If you do not have either of the Phantoms required to perform this test, please contact our parts department at parts at blockimaging.com. So remove your QA block from your table. From your main Encore screen, go to your directory tab, select your spine phantom as your patient. Make sure you're selecting the AP spine scan. Click your position button up top and the scan arm will move into position. Once your scan arm stops, 
position your phantom so that the laser is in the center of L5 and running straight up through the spine. After your phantom is positioned, click start on your software. You should see half of L5 in the start of your scan. Continue your scan all the way up through T12, L4, L3, L2, L1, and T12. I can abort if I need to. And save that measurement making sure that your phantom is analyzed properly and that your intervertebral lines are in the correct intervertebral spaces, making sure that you're looking at your average for two through four and collecting the BMD value. You will do this two more times and gather each BMD value and get an average of those scans. Save, close, and you can go back to directory and select your spine phantom scan again for your second scan. Once all three spine phantom scans are acquired and analyzed properly, find your L2 through 4 BMD value from all three scans, add them together and get your average. Next, we need to know our expected value. The expected value can be found on a sticker on side of your encapsulated phantom or a paper along with your water bucket phantom shipped with your system. Find the average, subtract it from your expected, then divide that number by your expected value again, and then multiply your equation times 100. This will give you a percent of difference. Verify your percent of difference to determine if your accuracy test has passed. For your spine phantom, it'll be up to 3% plus or minus, or with your water bucket phantom, a plus or minus of 2%. Before completing your PM, a few small steps. Make sure your printer's cleaned off, you've checked the ink in the printer, and reloaded it with paper. Also, wipe any dust or debris off the table itself. Make sure you're not using any bleach on the table pad. You also want to ensure that your customer's been doing their backup and archive process and keeping up to date. Next, you wanna make sure that you exit the service software. To do so, click your exit screen, exit Encore software, and you'll have to restart your Prodigy software. To finalize, run one last QA before leaving your customer's site. This should complete your PM. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact us at blockimaging.com.